Welcome to Identity Church Sunday Morning Message, where our sonship is revealed. Stay tuned at the end of this message to receive more information about resources available through Identity Church. Now grab your Bible, sit back, and enjoy a message from Identity Church that is already in progress. I want to share with you um, 2019 Christmas message. Um, I don't know how many of you realize that that I hear God pretty clearly sometimes, and sometimes I don't think it's God, because I didn't think God would think that way, talk that way, and act that way. Found out that he's actually pretty funny, and uh, he thinks I'm very humorous. And I just want to share where I'm at. We're, we're closing out 2019. It's been a rough year. It's been a good year. It's been a rough year uh, in business. Uh, Stephanie uh, opened up this morning for those that weren't here as family and just publicly told everybody I fired her. <clears throat> Someone's got to do it. <laughs> but but when you look at, you know, when you remove employees, you got to put new employees, you got a business to run, you have to, you got 279 customers, you have six bosses and a wife, and no one, you know, at times no one's happy and, and you're at the push at the end of your year. And then you get a phone call from some people in New York and within a 10 day notice, I get on an airplane and I go to New York last week to publicly display what restoration and reconciliation looks like. <clears throat> and, uh, the apostle that, that we're, I was going to do this with and, and calls me. He says, when are you coming into town? I said, I'm coming in Friday afternoon. He says, uh, I said, but I'm going to stop and see my sister on my, my way down. He says, no, you're not. You're coming to a, a meeting that um, somebody's having. He's a prophet in the, in the region. And uh, I want you to be there. Like, yes, sir. I said, who's speaking? And he says, uh, a man by the name of Matt Sassano which is the pastor that 25 years ago I got in trouble with. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> See, I had pre-planned to go and publicly display what reconciliation looks like, but I wasn't prepared for that one. And so I go, and, and, and I don't know if you know anything about Western New, New York, but... <clears throat> Um, they make rednecks look really civilized. <laughs> and this church is out in the boondocks. And so it's a Friday night. We're there. This guy gets lost. GPS doesn't work. Gets a speeding ticket. So he's, you know, he comes in about 25 minutes late. Doesn't know I'm in the room. They close a little worship thing. His wife gets a flag. And while she's getting a flag, I get a prophetic word for her. And I'm like, I don't want a word for her. This is his new wife. I don't want a word for her. <clears throat> I got it anyway. And I saw her heart. I'm like, great. I'll just keep that to myself. And how do you know sometimes you're not going to be able to do what you want to do? So this prophet gets up and introduces his guest speaker and then says, I have a word that I have to give. I had a dream a year ago when I laid out all these meetings for the year. And two weeks ago, I had a vision that filled this dream. And I realized it's about Matt and Charlie. This guy doesn't even know I'm in the room yet. And he calls me and him up to prophesy over us. I mean, we're talking later. He goes, when I heard Charlie, I, did, I had no clue it was you. And he starts prophesying about um, I see that when you guys started off, you were very good friends, that God had called you guys to work together. And he says, I see this, this, this man, God wouldn't give me his face, but he was whispering in your ears. And he brought division. His, 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 his words turned into gossip, and gossip turned into division, and you two separated. He said, but God wouldn't tell me who he was, because God said, don't worry about it, that man's dead. I knew instantly who it was. Then he says to this apostle who has 
has had multiple meetings canceled when he heard that I was coming because he had influence. He's called me a false prophet. He's called me names for years. And this guy says, and the word of the Lord is, um, you, the gate in Charlie's always been the key. And you two, if you want the promises of revival in the region, you two better work together. I'm like, oh God, what are you doing? So I go back to my seat and uh, I said, Lord, whoa. it's like you just, you just canceled all the years of accusations. You just did all these things. And, and now what? He said, if you stay dead, I can use you. I'm like, oh, this is not going to be fun. I can tell. So afterwards, him and I are talking to this prophet, and he says, he says I mean, detailed stuff about me being a key, because I had given that vision 25 years ago to this guy. And that's what made him mad. Who do you think you are? Who? Oh, God called me a key. Well, you, I, and, and it, just stupid stuff. And I prophesied stuff that got me in trouble. Um, under the anointing, I saw a vision. I saw a divorce. I saw people in their leadership and their eldership die in their fifties. I saw the church not exist, and 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 I and I put it out there. Well, two weeks later, I was back up in New York. This is twenty five years ago, and him and his board and his elders all called me a false prophet, and I knew I'd I had the accuracy, but when they challenged my identity. I didn't walk in love, even though I was accurate. And I can sit here and say that when I was in New York last week, I said, God, I don't want to be ever called a false prophet again. It has nothing to do with your accuracy of your gift. It has everything to do with the consistency of your heart. And, uh, because I was accurate. He did have elders die at 50. He did get divorced. The church did collapse. Here we are 25 years later. The Lord says, hey, uh, his new wife, go tell her what I think about her. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I've been trying to avoid these relationships for 25 years. And so I prophesy over her. But what happened is I saw her heart. See, see, the first time I got in trouble when they challenged me, it was actually his wife that tried to take me out. And I'm written up on a couple of prophetic books that things not to do, like never call the pastor's wife a Jezebel to her face. <laughs> it's not a good move. It will get you killed. So he shows me the heart of his new wife. And, and, and in that prophecy I gave to her, I heard the Lord say, you can trust this one. I don't want to trust this one. This is a dormant, dead thing that I, I wanted to go. So, so this is, so I come back and, and, and I'm kind of messed up because I, I believe when prophets speak at that level, you need to take heed. So Matt and I are in, in the back, I go, what do we do now? So his new wife comes up and goes, hey, this is Charlie Coker. And when she heard my name, I went, oh, you just put a name with that, didn't you? A face with that name. And, and I knew God is doing something in reconciliation and restoration in preparation for a harvest. And he could care less if you were accurate, by the way. I figured this out. If God will send Jesus to get murdered, you're not going to survive. How many want authority? <laughs> Just get crucified. It's so long and short of it, the, the leadership that I'm connected with, nobody let me off the hook. Nobody. These people are like, do it now. While God is talking, and long and short of it, I'm going back on February the 20th. I'm going to sit in front of his board. 
See, because that's where it started, was his leadership told me I was a false prophet, and I then told all of his leadership that I would meet them on June the 10th at noon. And it says, we'll just ask God to kill the one that's wrong. They don't invite you back after that. <laughs> I'm sharing where I'm, 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 I'm trying to share where I'm at emotionally and spiritually because I also believe that what God is doing is so supernatural right now. Here's what he said to me because I'm, I'm supposed to be a prophet. I want to know what 2020 is coming. And here's what he said to me. He says, if you didn't kick the devil's butt in 2019, you won't have hindsight for 2020. And so I had to go back through some devil butt kicking that I did this year. So I can say I've kicked some devil butt. I, I dealt with some things. I, 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 I didn't let the enemy get away in every area. And so that's kind of where I'm at. Because I want, don't you want 2020 hindsight? Yeah, well, I think our, our season and our history lessons are over with. Now God is coming into a new thing and there's a harvest coming. And so I had that written down on the airplane. Prepare for the harvest. Prepare for the harvest. The broken, the unsaved are coming if my church is ready. If my bride is ready to, to, to facilitate what I'm doing, be ready. So, so I'm, I'm, I went to Tampa this week, and I've got a situation in business. A $3 million customer with a, he's got a $14 million customer. And somehow this guy, um, uh, there's been a miscommunication on, on um, uh, price increases and communication. And, and I, I thought I did everything I was supposed to. I sent the emails. I know, I know, I thought I did. But the accusation that it is my fault has been coming at me for a month. Susie and I were driving back from, from uh, Daytona and I had, uh, my phone on um, conference to where she could hear it. And this guy cussed me for 20 miles, blamed me, cussed me, and, 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 and to the point where I'm laying in, in, in a hotel room in Tampa Thursday night, and I have now been convinced that I didn't do what I know I thought I did that I didn't send the information, that I didn't send the email. And I'm thinking, holy moly, this is about a $150,000 mistake that I don't know how to correct. Now, my bosses were in town last week, and we had a meeting with them, and they're ranting and raving, and everybody's pointing at me. 1.30 in the morning, I, 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 I'm in a hotel in Tampa, and I... I don't normally get on my knees to pray, but I got on my knees. I said, Jesus, I need your mercy. I, I, I don't know. I'm too good at this job. I don't make these kind of mistakes, but I can't prove it. I can't prove it. I need mercy. I says, well, you know why you couldn't find it in your archive. I said, what? He says, you know why you couldn't find it in your archive? Why? Because you switched email addresses. <laughs> One thirty in the morning, I'm like, oh, by the way, I'm now a diamond member of Hilton, so I have premium internet. <laughs> I have arrived. I know if you saw Facebook, when you're a diamond, you get candy in your room. Just goes with the perks. So I get, I'm like, really? So Boom, I sent an email on October 23rd. Boom, I sent an email on the 9th. And everything, God just like, I'm like, woohoo. Now, I still got to deal with this stuff, but it ain't my fault. So, so you got to understand where I'm at here. It's not my fault, but it still sits under my responsibility. Oh, now I got to be like, Jesus. So at 1.30, I sent a little email to the guy. I said, hey, I don't know if you missed this email or not, but if you did, it could have been the root of our problem. The next morning, they're like, holy moly, I missed that email. I said, holy moly, now we can fix it. And so, so the restoration thing. So, so I kind of drive back Friday a little bit, a little speeding a little bit more. But I'm tired and, and, and weary. 
and looking for the break to spend time and hear God. And, and so Susie and I go out Friday night, we're getting pizza. And I said something like, I need a massage. And she gets this new girl that used to work at this place and does this and she's that. And boom, I got a 10 o'clock appointment Saturday morning for a 90 minute massage. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so I get up and uh, I have some prayer time Saturday morning. It's my day off. It's really a day off. I, I don't have to answer to anybody. I have a, a massage scheduled. I have time. She knows that I got to work on my message and, and, and we have a plan for date night and, and, and it's, it's art. It, it's a good day. And I leave the house and I, put on my satellite radio, and, and I've been listening to country music a little bit. I mean, I used to really love it, but I got so religious I wouldn't listen to that secular stuff. Well, I'm breaking that religion. And, and, and so, all right, all, right, let, all right, everybody put your hand over your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, we love our pastor. We forgive him for any offense. That may come across, and we'll wait to the end to see if you show up. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm listening to, to, to uh, a country music satellite station that is doing Christmas music. And, dude, I'm singing an old holy night. I got tears from them. I'm like, wow, I hate Christmas. It's, it's, not, it's not the fun time for me. I normally get into Christmas just a couple days ahead of time. Because I've always been in retail. I've always had the pressure. I always have to do it. But it was my day off. And poof, God shows up. And we have Oh Holy Night, a bunch of redneck country western people singing it together. And they have another song about Jesus. And then they go into another song that, that, that just made me. It just, how could they flip from that to this in a moment's notice? And, and on the satellite screen, it tells you the name of the country music singer and the song. And the title of the song was Bra Off. And it's a song by Ray Lynn. And here's, here's some of the words. Breaking up with you is like having a day off, sitting on my couch, sipping Jack, eating Dippin' Dots. Breaking up with you is like taking my bra off. <laughs> Feeling free. Loose like this T-shirt. I, I got on, and I should be crying, grieving, some kind of loss, but it's like taking this pink, lazy, suffocating, push-up, flaky, too tight, stupid brawl off. That's what's breaking up with you. And I went from all holy night to taking my brawl off is what it feels like breaking up with you. And it just messed up my, the old holy night went out the window. <laughs> and I'm like, how can they go from that? And it made me mad. It, made, it really did make me mad. <sighs> so I go into the bank, I do my bank, and I'm, I'm heading to my, my massage, and I'm still mad. I need to turn the radio back on from the bank to the massage place. So I, I get in my quiet, and they put this oil-smelling, eucalyptus-smelling stuff, and it's clearing out my sinuses. They put on some Indian flute, flutes, pot-smoking music, and <laughs> the lights are down, and she starts massaging. I'm, my, my mind gets quiet. And then the Lord says, why did that make you so mad? It's your culture. They can go from old holy night to take your bra off. That's what breaking up with you is taking my bra off. Why did that make you so mad? Why could that break your worship? He said, you've been married 40 years. You ever seen your wife after a long day going, ah, freedom? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what he's talking about. 
didn't have it strapped on, didn't have it pushed up. How many times is she like, oh, it's so good to get out of that. I'm like, oh, okay. I see it. I hear it. He goes, but, but, but listen, son, it's time, it's time that you don't let your culture define you. You define the culture. I'm like, how in the world can you turn this into a godly message? He says, well, one of my names is the multi-breasted one. One of the names of God is the multi-breasted one. And I'm about to release the anointing of the multi-breasted one. Why? Because that's the nurturing side of me. That's, that's the, all you are weary and heavy laden, come unto me. Oh, do you know the little baby when he's breastfeeding? Is he resting? Yeah. And he says, you know, I know you, you, you know me as your savior, but do you, you've never asked me if I was breastfed. We didn't have formula in those days. I'm like, oh, okay, where are we going with this? He says, do you think I cried when they circumcised me? I would. And then, then he said this to me. He says, just because Mary found favor and was carrying me, the Spirit of God, in her womb, do you believe it canceled the, 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 the Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, where, where the curse was that woman would be in pain during childbirth? Do you think her carrying me made her childbirth painless? I said, probably not. He said, nah, she screamed like a cabanchi. But she still pushed. She still nurtured. He said, while she was in pain, she was saying, there's something interesting going on. Because I remember when I walked into Elizabeth's house and her, and her baby jumped because my baby showed up. He said, who do you think potty trained me? I said, excuse me? He said, who do you think potty trained me? Do you think I pooped my pants? Probably. He says, do you remember when you and your boys finally saw snow together when you're upstate New York and you taught them how to write their name when they peed in the snow? I said, yes. He says, try writing Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He says, when you have to write Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you go back to Yeshua. <laughs> it's easier. And, 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 and he's talking to me. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He said, do you think there was dysfunction in our family? Do you think there was dysfunction in our family? See, he, this is in my 90-minute Massage, ah, ooh, ooh, ooh. My mind's quiet, and I'm hearing things. Listen, there was a star born in their house. Do you realize it was two years, he was approximately two years old when the wise men showed up with all the money and all the gifts and all the things that could take and change the culture of their household to where they had enough money to go to Egypt to preserve the star that was born. He says there was people in that culture who would consider that a dysfunctional family to where a child is born, that kind of wealth comes into it, changes their culture, changes their, their, their uh, economic status to where they, they go to Europe for a while. Can you imagine the words of accusation because all of a sudden this star is born in their house? Do you see what the family did in the infancy of Jesus? I immediately thought of Luke Scott, member of our church. See, he was born. His brother was born. But somewhere along the line, they figured out he was a good baseball player. Do you realize it changed the culture of his family? His mom and dad sacrificed to take him to the baseball camps, send him to all the things. Let me tell you something. When you figure out that there's a star that has been born in your house, your house needs to change 
Otherwise, you'll never reap the benefit of the star. See, I shared this with Luke, so don't think I'm throwing him under the bus. See, they recognized Luke had talent before Luke ever signed a multi-million dollar contract. They valued the star before the star had value. This week I was reading some things that my father had written in his Bible. And uh, here's what he says. Nearly all men can handle adversity. But if you want to test a man's character, give him power. See, see, Luke, Luke was a baseball star in training. His family had to do what they did. But when he signed the multi-million dollar contract, he could have told them all to go leave, all go away. His character would have been tested. Instead, he positioned his family for their economic shift, their status shift, and he kept his integrity. Some of you are supposed to be stars on the public arena, but we haven't passed the integrity test to get there. Here's what Jesus said to me. He said, son, do you believe when my hormones kicked in that I liked the girls? I don't know, they wore a lot of clothes. He says, son, I had to pull on the Holy Spirit that lived within me, just like lives within you now, to walk a sexually pure life because I knew that the formula that I was given while I was being breastfed, because see, we do formula now, the, the nurturing of my mother of who I was, the nurturing of my mother that an angel showed up one day, Jesus, and told me I had found favor with God. And ever since I got the favor of God, I lost the favor of man. They called me a whore. Yeah. They called you a bastard. But during that nurturing, when I was an infant, she told me who I was. She knew a star had been born. She knew my purpose. She shared my purpose. And when she shared my purpose, I found out that I had a different father. Now we have a dysfunctional family, two fathers in the same house with, with what, four brothers and two sisters? He says, you're talking about dysfunction? He says, you think Joseph with a, a, a pretty coat had problems? Do you remember the story of Joseph? He was daddy's favorite with a coat. They killed that sucker, but, but, but they, didn't ha they, they had enough character. They wanted money. They, didn't, they, they acted like he was dead, told his father that he had died, but he went off and saved them. He says, do you think that story in the Bible wasn't told me? Joseph got a coat of many colors. I was told I would have scars as a coat. But I still knew my purpose. When my hormones kicked in and holy living had to be, I had to go to the Holy Spirit and go, how can I survive this? Is all these urges, all these impure thoughts, are these demons? And the Holy Spirit would say, you can't cast out a hormone, son. You have to have authority over it. Because he would whisper to me, if you fail in this test, you will never be able to say to the religious leaders, if you look upon a woman with lust, it's equal to committing adultery. If I can't live the life of purity and holiness, then I will lose my seat of authority to speak to them in a realm that will make my father empower them if they'll submit. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is very, who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may, may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. He says, do you think I, bought, I, I battled rebellion? We 
We've been talking, Charlie. Do you remember why you reacted the way you reacted? They called you a false prophet. But your information was accurate. Your prophecy was accurate. But your response labeled you false prophet because you didn't walk with my heart because you had a false identity. He said, there's a harvest coming of souls. It is time for the bra that has been bringing pain to the bride to be taken off and to become the multi-breasted one again. For the infants to come into the house of God and find out their identity as they're drinking milk and don't put a demand to make them eat meat until they're mature enough. And it's time that the nurturing side of my spirit is going to rest on my... He goes, you've been looking for power. You've been looking for glory. You've been looking for, 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 for the miraculous. He said, I've been looking for a woman that will know how to nurture like my bride. It's funny. <laughs> I wish Susie was here, but... God reminded me of when her mom and took all the kids to the tent meetings and, and all the, you know, the, the Jesus movement, they would come in with white robes and have heroin strapped to them and they'd get saved and they would throw their hair around and they were worshiping with uh, uh, white hankies. Well, her dad wasn't a Christian and her dad was worked in the construction industry. And this, this revival that her mom took all the kids to was, be, was the talk of the town. And someone told Glenn, her dad, yeah, they're waving their brawls. <laughs> it was hankies. <laughs> and so, you know, the Lord says, you, you, you think that was a joke? But it's time for the church to wave their bra. The restraint, the restriction. And use that part to nurture the way it was supposed to be instead of flirt with the things of the world. I'm like, Lord, this is a crazy, crazy Christmas message. But when you know there's a star born, the family changes its dynamics so the star can be revealed. Jesus is inside of you, taking you through all of these tests so that he can trust you when he reveals who you really are. Can you, I, I, I imagine, I go to the scripture where, you know, remember Miriam and, and Moses got into an argument and Miriam challenged Moses and she turned her hand, turned uh, Aaron's hand, some, anyway, somebody turned leprous, and there was this fight between Moses and Miriam. And, and, and she was wrong because she challenged the man of God at the time. But do you understand the dynamics that, that she was his 12-year-old, she was 12 years older, and his sister? She's the one who floated him down the Nile to be picked up by Pharaoh's daughter to save his life. Why? Because a star had been born. So, 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 but, but if you really look at scripture in the first time that a female is called a prophetess, it's the Nabi, the, the Nabi of God. She was the first female uh, prophet in scripture and she was challenging her brother. Okay, listen, I have three older sisters. I understand dysfunction within a Christian family. I, I have three older sisters, I, but I can, I can, my mind's eye is, is Miriam's going, hey boy, you think you're the only one that can hear God? I heard God when I floated your little behind down the river. I heard God to, sal to salvage everything that Egypt was doing. I heard God, I knew you were a star because I'm a prophet. Aaron is your prophet. I'm God's prophet. I get it from the throne room. You get it from Aaron. Do you think there's dysfunction in those kind of relationships? Come on. But a star had been born. 
See, the question is, some of you are supposed to be the star, but you've let the, the cursing of people, the pressure of life, the addictions that, 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 that entrap us, keep us from the mentality that I was born to be a star. I was born to have wise men come visit me. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm flipping here. It says you, you have wise men. There's, this, there, there's wise men in Scripture that come and give counsel to those in leadership. We as Christians should have the answers. Why? Because we have wise men from the heavenlies that stand beside us. We have the spirit of wisdom that stands before And the spirit of wisdom, she was with God when he created everything. He did not create without wisdom. And wisdom is, ident is a person in Scripture. I've, se I've seen her in the spirit stand beside certain leaders. You know, was, was Jesus so entrenched of the miraculous side that when the family pet died, he would go raise it from the dead just to practice. Is that our mentality? Jesus said to me, he says, do you think I got a spanking? Well, you were perfect. <clears throat> did you get a spanking when you gave a perfect prophecy? Yeah, I did. He said, listen, I had to be subject and governed. And I knew I was greater than all of them. He says, sometimes you won't let someone be a big shot because you want to prove that you know more than they do. But you want to be like me. He said, I got in trouble because I went back to the leaders when I was 12 <laughs> and, 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 and started just blowing their mind with my revelation at 12. He said, but then my mother jacked me up because I had cost them a day's labor and they had to come back and find me. I was so entrenched to prove what I knew to the rabbis of the day. But boy, she little Jew mummy grabbed me up by my little ear and told me to straighten up and that I had ruined a couple of days work with Joseph, my stepfather. He says, you're talking about dysfunction. We could have had it except there was a ruling class called my mother and my father. I had to submit to Joseph, my stepfather, even though I knew that God was my father. How bad did you want to be me? I don't think I want to be you at all. Because there's some people around here that are crucify you. So I said, God, what about this Christmas stuff? Does the religious spirit want to murder you because you, do, you celebrate the birth of Christ on the wrong date? Do you realize that, that December the 25th is not the day he was born? Are you okay with that? Or are you so stinking religious that you won't let me worship on a day that doesn't fit the criteria of the facts that you think are there? Okay. Um, it, 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 and we get caught up in, in, in the shenanigans of this. All right, now you want scriptures because I can feel it in the room. Um, oh, I had to, when a star is born, the song came on, we're moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Moving on up to the east side, we finally got a piece of the pie. Fish don't fry in the kitchen, beans don't burn on the grill. Took a whole lot of trying just to get up this hill. Now we're in the big leagues, getting our turn at bat. There you go. As long as we live, that's you and me, baby. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, we're moving on up to the east side to a deluxe apartment in the sky. See, when you, got it, when you know a star has been born. Listen, I believe that, that I, I believe when we recognize the, the virgin birth and the death, burial, and resurrection of what lives inside of us, we can say a star has been born. And then the testing 
the character testing that it takes for God to trust us with real power is nothing but a process instead of an angry God trying to beat me. So Luke 1, verses 28 and 32. This is when the angel came to, this is, by the way, this is all in a 90-minute in a massage. The angel comes to Mary, says, you have found favor. And her life just got turned upside down. She gets called names. He gets called names. Joseph has to have a dream to know that God's in it for this family to even stay intact. And, and, and one of the things, Jesus had to walk in integrity. And, and me being the smart aleck that I am, it's, it, the angel comes and says, you found favor. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what greeting, what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a child and his call his name Jesus. He'll be great and he'll be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him a throne on his father. Listen, do you think that, that there was pot smokers when he was a teenager? So, so him getting, them giving him a nickname, the most high, was it because the angel said it and his mother convinced it? Or was it because he could smoke more pot than his friends? What most high are we serving? See, the problem is if you get caught up in the human side of it, you'll forget the fact that there's a Holy Ghost living in you that lived in Jesus, equal, without measure, in you. So you won't be a pot smoker, and God will say you're the son of the most high. It is the addicting, breaking power that was born that day of a virgin from favor of God that gives us the ability to walk in integrity, to walk in power and not get hung up with the cultural the vices of, the, of this world. I want to be no the son of the most high, not because I smoke pot. But I have to rely on the Holy Spirit that's in me to do that. Colossians 2, 14 and 17, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by trumping over them. Therefore, because of the cross, therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in question of food and drink or with regard to a festival, a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of things to come but the substance belongs to Christ. Listen, this, there, there's, a, there's a, a strong religious spirit that is trying to destroy Christians that honor Jesus Christ's birthday of December 25th. There, there's a strong murdering religious spirit because we didn't get the date right. Then I, I love to do this. Well, then what day are we all going to have the rapture? Well, no man knows that. And you don't know that one either. Get off your religious high horse and leave me alone. We, we had family members at one time. It's just, I can't believe you and Susie, so devout Christians would have a Christmas tree in your house. Why? I was taught that it was Jesus' birthday. They gave me this download. It's actually a pagan holiday. It's to worship the fertility God. I'm like, oh, that's why we like being intimate at night with the Christmas lights on. Dang, what do you want me to do there? That isn't what I worship. That isn't why we worship. <laughs> you know, our love must be failing. We got a little Christmas tree this year. <laughs> ah, I have found the problem. <laughs> all right, she put, that's what we got a Christmas tree this big. That's all we got. Kids ain't coming over. We don't care. Okay. So I am not religious about it because I don't have one this year. It's like, poof. But, but, but <laughs> what am I saying? What am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it just went south. <laughs> we need men's tomorrow night, seven. 
Oh uh, yeah, we're, you didn't, you do not go to that lingerie shop. We have a new lingerie shop two doors down. I would no more. <laughs> Stop it. All right, we just got too real. Anyway. <laughs> I, 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 I'm past over the Christmas tree. So, so I, I get home after my massage and I have all this download. And, and, and there are some things he told me that I haven't shared because they're, they're, they're the secrets. You know, not everything you get in a secret place should you talk. Otherwise, it's no longer a secret place. He was dealing with me on some things that are hidden. That is none of your business. That's why it's a secret. And so then, but he started, he said, I want you to preach this message. I said, I think I should keep a secret to this message and not preach it. He said, no. He said, I want my people to understand that I was sinless. And I wasn't perfect. I got spankings, little boy. I cried when I was circumcised. I was breastfed. I had family squabbles. My, my siblings thought I was an ogre because I was the oldest and I knew more than my mom and dad. Jesus was the oldest. No, I'm not the oldest. I got three older sisters and they psh, help me, Jesus. So, so if you're the star sibling, your true character test is what are you doing to have good relationships with your siblings? What are we doing in the, in the church family? Are we allowing the one that's really gifted to be able to be what God called them to be and us not be offended with it? Have we given grace to grow one another? I mean, do you realize when the wise men came, they got enough gifts to go to Egypt. Their economic life changed. Can you see? I know me. If that would happen to, to my family, I'd be like, you know, Dad. That's me. That new car you're driving? That's me. He would have killed me. He would have murdered me. I believe in, two, in, in, in 2020, God's going to take the brawl off. So those that are broken, those that need nurturing, those that need the intimacy, intimacy and nurturing to know who God is, my mom knew who I was. My mama knew who I was. See, but you think that your brokenness is what disqualified you. But when I was raped at knife point at seven, something was broken in me. And God didn't tell my mom. And God didn't let the idiot's parents that did it tell my parents. God left me broken. Why did God leave me broken as a little seven-year-old? Because my mom knew something was wrong. And my mom went to God. What do I do about my broken little boy? He's supposed to be a star. He's supposed to fulfill these things. And he's broken. And God told my mother, I was seven years old. You rock him to sleep every night. And tell him the things of the kingdom. And tell him who I say he is. And from 7 to 12 years old, my mom would rock me to sleep. And she would tell me who God said I was. If we won't let God bring us close and nurture us and experience that he is the multi-breasted one that can give you everything you need in the place that you're broken, in the place that you're hurt, the mistakes, you blunders you made, then our star, our shining star is going to go out. 
But in this coming year, God's going to say, come. He's going to say to the world, come to my bride. Come to my church. There's room on the teat for you. And I say that with all sincerity. Where are you going, Stephanie? I fired her. Now she won't do anything. <laughs> Aha. I want to sing Oh Holy Night. Don't let a stupid country western song steal your ability to see who he really is. Stand to your feet. Thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church. To know more about us, go to IdentityChurch.net, where you'll find resources such as a calendar, media, and upcoming events. You may also download an app for your mobile device from the Apple App Store or Google Play. Then from your mobile device, you can hear our messages, read from the Bible, take notes, connect with us on the social media, and even pay your tithe. Again, thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church.